The Muppet Show is a comedy television series created by Jim Henson and featuring the Muppets. The series originated as two pilot episodes produced by Henson for ABC in 1974 and 1975, respectively. While neither episode was moved forward as a series and other networks in the United States rejected Henson's proposals, British producer Lou Grade expressed interest in the project and agreed to co-produce The Muppet Show for ATV. Five seasons, totaling 120 episodes, were broadcast on ATV and other ITV franchises in the UK and in first-run syndication in the US from 1976 to 1981. The program was filmed at Elstree Studios, England. The Muppet Show is presented as a variety show, featuring recurring sketches and musical numbers interspersed with plotlines taking place behind the show. Within its context, Kermit the Frog acts as showrunner and host of the show, who tries to maintain control of the overwhelming antics of the other Muppet characters, as well as appease the rotating slate of guest stars. The Muppet Show is also known for its uniquely designed characters, burlesque nature, physical slapstick, sometimes absurdist humor, and parodies. As The Muppet Show became popular, many celebrities were eager to perform with The Muppets on television and in film. The cast of performers over the course of the series consisted of Henson, Frank Oz, Jerry Nelson, Richard Hunt, Dave Goles, Steve Whitmire, Fran Brill, Irene Oscar, Louise Gold, Catherine Mullen, Karen Prell, Brian Mule, Bob Payne, and John Lovelady. Many of the performers also worked on Sesame Street, whose characters made sporadic appearances on The Muppet Show. Jerry Jull and Jack Burns were two of the head writers. The music was performed by Jack Parnell and his orchestra. Topic: History. Since its debut in 1969, Sesame Street had given Jim Henson's Muppet characters exposure. However, Henson began to perceive that he was becoming typecast as a children's entertainer. Subsequently, he began conceiving a program for a more adult demographic. Two television specials, The Muppets' Valentine Show and The Muppet Show, Sex and Violence were produced for ABC and are considered pilots for The Muppet Show. Neither of the two specials was ordered to series. However, the primetime access rule was recently enacted, shifting the 7.30 to 8 p.m. Eastern Time slot from the networks to their affiliates. CBS became interested in Henson's series proposals and express intent to broadcast it weekly on its owned and operated stations. According to the original pitch reel, the program was originally to have the involvement of George Schlatter. Lou Grade, proprietor of the British commercial station ATV, was familiar with puppet television programs. Having underwrote the various works of Jerry Anderson, Grade offered a deal to Henson that would result in the latter's program being produced at the ATV studios in Elstree, England. ATV, as part of the ITV network, would broadcast the program to other ITV stations in the United Kingdom, and its distribution arm, ITC Entertainment, would handle international broadcasts. Henson set aside his misgivings about syndication and accepted. Topic. Opening sequence The Muppet Show theme, written by Henson and Sam Pottle in 1976, is the show's theme song. It is the opening and closing theme for every episode of The Muppet Show and was performed by the Muppets in a scene of The Muppets. At the end of the song, Gonzo the Great appeared on stage to play the final note, with various comical results. For the first series, he struck the O in the show's logo as a gong, in all other series, he appeared within the O to play a trumpet. Each episode ended with an extended instrumental performance of The Muppet Show Theme by the Muppet Orchestra before Statler and Waldorf gave the last laugh of the night. 
Some last laugh sequences featured other Muppets on the balcony. For example, in one episode, the Muppets of Sesame Street appeared behind the duo who told them, How should we know how to get to Sesame Street? We don't even know how to get out of this stupid theater box. Every series, the TV version of the song was presented with reworked lyrics. While the opening sequence evolved visually over the course of the show's five series, the musical composition remained essentially the same. Throughout the years, the song has become a staple of the franchise. Topic. Setting Topic. Muppet Theater The Muppet Theater is the setting for The Muppet Show, a grand old vaudeville house that has seen better days. In episode 106, Kermit identifies the name of the theater as the Benny Vandergast Memorial Theater, although other episodes merely identify it as the Muppet Theater. It's also identified as merely Muppet Theater in It's a Very Merry Muppet Christmas Movie. It is then that the theater becomes registered as a historical landmark, and it cannot be shut down. According to the Phantom of the Muppet Theater, the theater was built by a stage actor named John Stone in 1802. At some point, a production of Hamlet ran in the theater, with Stone playing the title role. An alternate exterior is also shown in the book. Locations seen in the Muppet Theater include backstage right, which includes Kermit's desk, the dressing rooms, the attic featured in four compilation videos released in 1985, the canteen, the prop room, the stage, Statler and Waldorf's box, the auditorium, reception, the recording studio, the stage door lobby, and the back alley. Some of these sets were later reused as the Happiness Hotel in The Great Muppet Caper. A replica of the theater serves as the setting for the Muppet Asterisk Vision 3D attraction at Disney's Hollywood Studios and Disney California Adventure. Scooter's uncle J.P. Gross owns the theater, and rents it to the Muppets, as Scooter is only too happy to remind Kermit. In a deleted scene from It's a Very Merry Muppet Christmas Movie, Kermit reveals that J.P. has died and left the theater to the Muppets in his will. This would have taken place some time after 1996, as J.P. can be seen and referred to as such by the head of the KMUP network in episode 107 of Muppets Tonight, the 1990s reworking of The Muppet Show. The Muppet Theater is shown to be in New York City as Rachel Bitterman plots to tear down the Muppet Theater and build a club. She is thwarted when Pepe the King Prawn manages to get the Muppet Theater designated as a national landmark. In the film The Muppets, a badly deteriorated version of the Muppet Theater is located next to Muppet Studios in Los Angeles. The Muppets reunite in hopes of raising enough money to buy the theater from oil magnate Tex Richmond before he can demolish it and start drilling for oil on the site. Topic: <laughs> <laughs> Characters and performers. Many of the characters who appeared on the Muppet show have appeared in previous and subsequent Muppet productions. Topic guest stars No guest star ever appeared twice on The Muppet Show, although John Denver appeared both on the show and in two specials John Denver and the Muppets, A Christmas Together and John Denver and the Muppets, Rocky Mountain Holiday, while Dudley Moore reappeared in the special, The Muppets Go to the Movies. Additionally, several guest stars from the series had cameos in one of the first three Muppet theatrical films. Originally, the producers had to call on their personal contacts to appeal to them to appear, especially considering that doing so meant an overseas trip to Britain to do so. 
However, the situation changed when the renowned ballet dancer Rudolf Nureyev offered to appear. His performance on this unusual TV program produced so much favorable publicity that the series became one of the most sought after for various celebrities to appear in. Many episodes featured actors, such as Steve Martin, Don Knotts, Harvey Korman, and Dom DeLuise. Some featured veteran performers like Ethel Merman and Rita Moreno, some featured well known pop singers, including Elton John, Diana Ross, Linda Ronstadt, and Leo Sayer. Sayer's show used his hit The Show Must Go On, he changed the lyrics in the second verse slightly, from I wish I could tear down the walls of this theater to I wish I could tear down the walls of this Muppet theater. The last episode, in 1981, featured then James Bond actor Roger Moore. Mark Hamill appeared in one episode as both himself and Luke Skywalker, his role in the Star Wars film series. One episode featured staff writer, Chris Langham who wrote some episodes of this show, starting in Series 3 guest starring due to Richard Pryor being unable to make the taping of the episode at the last minute. An early tradition was to present the guest star with a Muppet likeness of themselves as a parting gift at the end of the show, but this only lasted for the first two episodes produced, featuring Connie Stevens and Juliet Prowse. The high cost and effort of creating these unique Muppets, scheduling conflicts, and potential legal issues contributed to the decline of this practice, although Muppet caricatures and parodies would continue to appear. Topic Episodes Topic Pilots The first episode opens on a character called Wally and develops as he types the script on his typewriter. In the second pilot, a new character called Nigel acts as the backstage boss. Statler and Waldorf grumble from a living room while watching the show on television this setting for Statler and Waldorf would be revisited in the first series of Muppets Tonight. In both pilot episodes, Kermit the Frog only plays a supporting role. Topic. Season 1 Kermit the Frog becomes the host for the show from the start of the first series, while former host Nigel gets a part as the orchestra leader. Statler and Waldorf now watch the show from a balcony. Other characters from the pilots, including Dr. Teeth and the Electric Mayhem, Sam Eagle, the Swedish chef, George the janitor, Mildred Huxtetter, Crazy Harry, Brewster, Nigel the conductor, and Droop continue to make appearances. Characters from previous Jim Henson productions also make appearances, including Ralph the Dog, Sweetums and Robin the Frog from The Frog Prince, Miss Piggy, Gonzo the Great, and Thog from The Great Santa Claus Switch. New characters include Fozzie Bear, The Muppet Newsman, Scooter, Dr. Bunsen Honeydew, Wardrobe Lady Hilda, Uncle Deadly, Marvin Suggs and his Muppophones, Trumpet Girl, and the singing duet of Wayne and Wanda. Recurring sketches include, Veterinarian's Hospital, At the Dance, Talking Houses, Panel Discussions, Fozzie's Monologue, Talk Spot, Muppet Labs, and Gonzo's Act. Topic. Season 2 Several changes were made for the second series. Each week, Scooter would now greet the guest star in his or her dressing room before the opening theme song by announcing the time until curtain call. The opening theme sequence was replaced with one involving the cast in arches. Sketches such as, At the Dance, Talk Spot, Panel Discussions, Talking Houses, and Fozzie's monologue either made fewer appearances or were dropped altogether. Several characters were rebuilt, with noticeable changes in Miss Piggy, Fozzie Bear, and Gonzo the Great. 
Characters like George the Janitor, Hilda, Mildred, and Wayne and Wanda were dropped from the series. Robin is identified as Kermit's nephew. New sketches include, Pigs in Space, and An Editorial by Sam the Eagle. New characters include Bunsen Honeydew's assistant Beaker, Link Hogtherob, Dr. Julius Strangepork, Doglian, and Annie Sue. Muppet performers Irene Oscar and John Lovelady departed from The Muppet Show after the first series. In early episodes of the second series, female puppeteers were auditioned to replace Oscar. Louise Gold was eventually hired as Oscar's replacement. Jack Burns quit his role as writer after the first series. Topic: <laughs> Season 3. All of the characters and sketches from the previous series remained. New characters included dimwitted stagehand Beauregard, boomerang fish thrower Lou Zealand, cafeteria lady Gladys, Bobby Benson and his baby band, and sports commenter Louis Kazagger. New segments included, Muppet Sports, and Bear on Patrol. Two new puppeteers, Steve Whitmire and Catherine Mullen joined the troupe of Muppeteers during this series. Also, in early episodes of the third series, Peter Friedman was auditioned to replace John Lovelady as a sixth male Muppet performer. Steve Whitmire was eventually hired, replacing Lovelady officially as a sixth male performer. Topic. Season 4 Most of the characters and sketches from the previous series remained. Canteen worker Gladys however, was replaced by a new character, Winnie. Rizzo the Rat also made his earliest appearances. Rizzo made his first appearance as Super Rat in the episode which featured Christopher Reeve as its guest star. Topic. Season 5 The cold open featuring Scooter visiting the guest star's dressing room was replaced by a new opening in which Pops, the doorman, would greet each guest as they entered the theater. New characters included Pops, Lips, and Gaffer the Cat. Two new puppeteers, Brian Mule and Karen Prell joined the troupe of Muppeteers during this series, and also Betsy Betos was auditioned to perform in eight episodes during this season. Topic. Recurring sketches At the dance the sketch was a regular during the first series but was used less frequently from the second series onward. Muppet characters some of them being whatnots, circulated on a semi-formal dance floor offering rapid-fire one-liner jokes and comebacks as the couples passed in front of the camera. Debuted in The Muppet Show, Sex and Violence, and played a large role in the plot for a Series 5 episode. Bear on Patrol Fozzie Bear is a luckless police officer named Patrol Bear and Link Hogtherob is the incompetent chief of police who always get into the silliest situations with the criminals brought in. The voice of the announcer was performed by Jerry Nelson. Debuted in the third series. Blackouts. A bunch of short, comic sketches traditional to vaudeville that end with the lights turning off or a quick closing of the curtain only appeared in the first series. Cold openings. The cold openings would appear at the beginning of each episode, and would officially introduce the guest star. During the first series, Kermit would introduce the guest star during the opening theme. His introduction would be followed by a clip of the guest star, usually surrounded by a group of Muppets. Beginning the second series, the cold openings would appear before the opening theme song. Scooter would visit the guest star in his, her dressing room, usually saying, 15 seconds to curtain. This would then be followed by a brief joke. In the fifth series, the guest star would enter the Muppet Theater and would be greeted by Pops the doorman. Pops would always say, Who are you? as soon as he saw the guest star. 
After the guest star introduced himself, herself to Pops, a joke would follow. An editorial by Sam the Eagle. Sam the Eagle gives an editorial on a specific topic which ends up occurring during the editorial. Only appeared in the second series. The Electric Mayhem. A bunch of musical sketches featuring Dr. Teeth and the Electric Mayhem. Fozzie Bear's Act. Fozzie Bear gets on stage and performs his famously bad jokes. Statler and Waldorf heckle him in a perpetual rivalry. The sketches became less frequent as Fozzie's off-stage presence became more prevalent. In one first series episode, however, Fozzie turned the tables on Statler and Waldorf with help from Bruce Forsyth and they waved the white flag in surrender. Mainly appeared during the first series, but made occasional appearances in later series. Gonzo's Stunts. These sketches detail the stunts of the great Gonzo. Muppet Labs. Muppet Labs is where the future is being made today. These segments featured the latest invention from Dr. Bunsen Honeydew with his assistant Beaker getting the worst of its inevitable malfunction. During the first series, Drive. Bunsen Honeydew hosted Muppet Labs by himself. The writers soon realized that another character was necessary to show Bunsen's failings, which resulted in Beaker being introduced in Series 2. Muppet Melodrama. A sketch where Uncle Deadly would capture Miss Piggy and put her in perilous plights to force her to marry him. Wayne would often have to be the one save her. Only appeared in the third series. Muppet News Flash. The Muppet Newsman delivers a news brief about a bizarre incident or human interest story. During the first series, these segments frequently featured an interview with the episode's guest star, who portrayed a person connected to the story. Beginning with the second series, the Muppet Newsman would almost invariably suffer some calamity associated with the story, such as being knocked out by a falling light fixture after he reported that the company manufacturing it had dropped production. Muppet Sports A sports sketch that features different sporting activities that are covered by Louis Kazagar. Debuted in the third series. Musical Chickens a bunch of Muppet chickens would peck the keys of a piano and play a classic song to show off their musical talents. Panel Discussions A sketch where Kermit the Frog, the featured guest star, and other Muppets discuss various topics. Only appeared in the first series. Pigs in Space Parody of science fiction programs like Star Trek, but also 1930s sci-fi serials. The spacecraft is called USS Swinetrek and the title voiceover is a parody of Lost in Space. It features Captain Link Hogtherob, Miss Piggy as first mate, and Dr. Julius Strangepork the name a takeoff on Dr. Strangelove. Usually, the sketches would involve the long-suffering Piggy putting up with the wacko Strangepork and the brain-dead Link treating her as an inferior because she is a woman. The early sketches also usually featured odd introductions for all the characters, such as calling Link the flappable captain, Miss Piggy the flirtatious first mate, and referring to Dr. Strangepork as describable. Dr. Strangepork usually got the most unusual description out of the three during these introductions as he was the oddest member of the group. This portion of the introduction was dropped during Series 3, and the announcer would simply claim it was time for Pigs I I I I N Spotchy Debuted in the second series Planet Kuzabane a sketch about a planet containing strange alien life forms like the Kuzabanian creatures, the Kuzabanian Fub, the Fazubes, the Kuzabanian Spubal, the Four Fazubes, and the Myrtladops. This was a common stop for the Swinetrek crew. The planet would also be featured later on Muppet Babies, the Space Cowboys episode of Jim Henson's Little Muppet Monsters, and City Kids, which featured different Kuzabanian aliens. 
Kermit the Frog would later report from Kuzabane on a 1992 Good Morning America appearance. Planet Kuzabane was also referenced in the science fiction episode of the Jim Henson Hour and in the video game Muppets Party Cruise. A poem by Ralph. Ralph the dog would recite a classic poem while other Muppets end up interrupting him. Only appeared in the first series. Ralph at the piano. Ralph the dog would sing classical songs and would be occasionally accompanied by the other Muppet characters. The Swedish Chef. A cooking show parody. It consists of the Swedish chef, who speaks mock Swedish, semi-comprehensible gibberish which parodies the characteristic vowel sounds and intonation of Swedish. He attempts to cook a dish with great enthusiasm until the punchline hits. A hallmark of these sketches was the improvisation between Jim Henson who performed the chef's head and voice and Frank Oz who was his hands. One would often make something up on the spot, making the other puppeteer comply with the action. Famous gags include, Chicky in Dubaski, Two Points, Swedish meatballs that bounce, and smashing a cake with a baseball bat after it begins insulting the chef in mock Japanese. Debuted in the pilot Sex and Violence. Talk Spots. While sitting on a wall, Kermit the Frog would talk to the guest star and would occasionally be joined by the other Muppets. Mostly appeared during the first series, but made occasional appearances during the second series, and made two rare appearances in the third series, one of which featured Sam the Eagle and the Swedish chef in place of Kermit. Talking Houses A bunch of houses that tell jokes to each other only appeared during the first series. UK spots. Due to shorter commercial breaks in the United Kingdom, every episode of The Muppet Show lasted two minutes longer in the UK than in the United States. The extra segments that were filmed to cover this time differential have been referred to as UK spots. Most of these UK spots consisted of a short song and never featured the guest star. Vendaface. The Vendaface voiced by Jerry Nelson is a vending machine that can give any Muppet a facelift. The Vendaface was apparently only meant to be used once, but David Laser said that they should not build such an expensive puppet only to use him once. The writers then decided to have him on the show a few more times in the first series. The Vendaface later appeared in episode 66 as the Vendaish, voiced by Jerry Nelson, which was a wish-granting machine. Veterinarian's Hospital, parody of the soap opera General Hospital and other medical dramas. This segment consists of Dr. Bob, played by Ralph the Dog, cracking corny jokes in the operating room with nurses Piggy and Janice, much to the bemusement of the frazzled patient. Each installment ends with Dr. Bob and his nurses looking around in puzzlement as a disembodied narrator tells viewers to tune in next time, when you'll hear Nurse Piggy, Dr. Bob, Nurse Janice say. Whereupon one of the three medics will prompt a corny response from one of the others. On a number of occasions, the veterinarian's hospital Sketch would cross over with the cast or set of another, such as, At the Dance, or Pigs in Space. On one occasion, Dr. Bob was the patient while the guest star Christopher Reeve played a doctor going to operate on Dr. Bob, and once Nurse Piggy was replaced much to her chagrin by guest star Loretta Swit, parodying her Nurse Houlihan character from M. A.S.H. In the first series, the narrator was usually performed by John Lovelady, but Jerry Nelson performed the role in both the Harvey Corman and Rita Moreno episodes, before taking over the role permanently from the Phyllis Diller episode. In the introduction, Dr. Bob went from a former orthopedic surgeon to a quack who's gone to the dogs. Wayne and Wanda each sketch would feature Wayne and Wanda singing a song, only to be interrupted by some sort of pun relating to a lyric. 
Sam the Eagle introduced these sketches, as he felt that they were among the few cultured aspects of the show. Only appeared during the first series, however, a few new sketches appeared in later series with just Wayne. Topic: Awards and nominations. The Muppet Show program was nominated for nine BAFTA awards during its run, winning three. It was nominated for 21 Primetime Emmy Awards, winning four, including the 1978 Award for Outstanding Comedy Variety or Music Series. It was presented with a Peabody Award in 1978. Also in 1978, the show received the Television Award of Merit by the Mary Washington Colonial Chapter of the National Society of the Daughters of the American Revolution. Topic: Primetime Emmy Awards. Topic: Others. Topic: Home Media. Topic: Compilation releases. In 1985, Playhouse Video released a collection of video compilations under the Jim Henson's Muppet Video banner. Ten videos were released, featuring original linking material in addition to clips from the show. Videos included The Muppet Review titled Kermit and Fozzie's Favorite Moments in the UK hosted by Kermit and Fozzie as they clean up the attic, with guest stars Linda Ronstadt, Paul Williams, Harry Belafonte, and Rita Moreno. The Kermit and Piggy Story, hosted by Kermit and Miss Piggy as they reminisce over their moments on the show, with guest stars Raquel Welch, Tony Randall, Cheryl Ladd, and Loretta Swit. Children's Songs and Stories with the Muppets, hosted by Scooter as he looks through a scrapbook of children's songs from the show, with interruptions by others as he constantly tries to introduce his favorite song, Six String Orchestra, with guest stars Julie Andrews, John Denver, Twiggy, Brooke Shields' Judy Collins, and Charles Aznavour. Rock Music with the Muppets, hosted by Dr. Teeth with assistance by Beaker in a recording studio, with guest stars Debbie Harry, Linda Ronstadt, Alice Cooper, Ben Vereen, Helen Reddy, Leo Sayer, Loretta Swit, and Paul Simon. Muppet Treasures, hosted by Kermit and Fozzie as they once again clean out the attic, with guest stars Zero Mostel, Loretta Lynn, Paul Simon, Buddy Rich Peter Sellers, and Ethel Merman. Gonzo Presents Muppet Weird Stuff, hosted by Gonzo and Camilla at Gonzo's Trailer Home, which Gonzo tries to pass off as a mansion, with guest stars John Cleese, Gene Stapleton, Dom DeLuise, Julie Andrews, Vincent Price, and Madeline Kahn. Country Music with the Muppets, hosted by Ralph at a barnyard radio station, with guest stars Mac Davis, John Denver, Crystal Gale, Loretta Lynn, Roger Miller, Roy Clark, Johnny Cash, Roy Rogers, and Dale Evans. Muppet Moments, once again hosted by Kermit and Fozzie as they clean the attic, with guest stars Pearl Bailey, Bernadette Peters, Andy Williams, Zero Mostel, and Liza Minnelli. Ralph's Rhapsodies with the Muppets, hosted by Ralph, with guest stars Marissa Berenson, Peter Sellers, George Burns, and Steve Martin. Fozzie's Muppet Scrapbook, hosted by Fozzie in the attic as he looks through a scrapbook of his material from the show, with guest stars Raquel Welch, Beverly Sills, and Milton Berline 1993, Jim Henson Video released two compilations under the It's the Muppets banner, Meet the Muppets and More Muppets, Please. Later, three volumes of the very best of The Muppet Show were released on VHS and DVD in the UK Volume 3 was a release of full episodes as opposed to compilations. 
Unlike the Playhouse video releases, It's the Muppets and the very best of The Muppet Show did not include any original footage or guest star clips, but all compilation collections did include material cut from the original U.S. broadcasts. Topic series releases In 1994, Jim Henson Video released The Muppet Show, Monster Laughs with Vincent Price, featuring the episodes with Vincent Price and Alice Cooper. Both episodes were edited. In addition to replacing the first series opening and the ending logos with Zoot, the Vincent Price episode was edited to remove the songs I'm Looking Through You and You've Got a Friend, the latter of which would be cut again when released on the first series DVD, as well as a sketch with the Talking Houses, while the Alice Cooper episode removed Robin's performance of Somewhere Over the Rainbow. Time Life and Jim Henson Home Entertainment began marketing best of volumes of The Muppet Show for mail order in 2001, with six initial volumes with three episodes on each VHS and DVD. Unique to each episode was an introduction by Jim Henson's son, Brian. Nine more volumes were added for 2002, The Muppet's 25th Anniversary. The collection was available for retail in 2002 via Sony Pictures Home Entertainment and Jim Henson Home Entertainment by which time Time Life had released its tenth volume. Buena Vista Home Entertainment released the first series on DVD in Region 1 on 9 August 2005. The rights to the episodes and characters used in The Muppet Show, and subsequent film outings, were bought in February 2004 by the Walt Disney Company. Several songs were cut from the Series 1 DVD release due to music licensing issues. There have also been some cuts in the intro sequence, and backstage scenes leading up to these songs. However, episodes that used Disney music remained unaltered for example, episode 14 of series 1 used Never Smile at a Crocodile from Peter Pan. Stormy Weather Joel Grey episode sung by Wayne and Wanda Gone with the Wind Jim Neighbors episode sung by Jim Neighbors The Danceress Jim Neighbors episode sung by The Danceress All of Me Paul Williams episode sung by Two Monsters Old Fashioned Way Charles Aznavour episode sung by Charles Aznavour with Mildred Huxtetter You've Got a Friend Vincent Price episode sung by Vincent Price Uncle Deadly and a chorus of Muppet Monsters The Only Uncut release of season 1 on DVD so far as the German DVD release by Disney's Buena Vista Home Entertainment division from 2010 which also contains English audio. However, the intro and end credits sequences on this release are in German. The following season 4 and season 5 episodes have never been released for home video, Linda Lavin, Shields and Yarnell, Crystal Gale, Arlo Guthrie, Victor Borga, Phyllis George, Diane Cannon, Christopher Reeve, Dizzy Gillespie, Anne Murray, Jonathan Winters, Andy Williams, Doug Henning, Carol Channing, Alan Arkin, Shirley Bassey, Joan Baez, Glenda Jackson, Loretta Swit, Hal Linden, Jean-Pierre Rompal, Chris Langham, Melissa Manchester. Chester, Gladys Knight, Wally Boag, Johnny Cash, and Buddy Rich. Topic. See also: Adult puppeteering. List of television programs.